ladies and gentlemen, my name is Jeff Omaha. Put the kids to bed, close the blinds, and phone your first cousin, because boy, do I have a story for you. Now, I want to talk to you a little bit about Sublime. Not Sublime, but Sublime. Okay, no, that, that, was, that was bad. Oh, God. Cut that. Just cut it. No. Oh, so bad. That's so bad. What am I doing? Why am I do? Oh, God. I should have just done the shoebox. I don't even... I'm out. Okay, I'm just gonna... No. Nope. Now our first story is about a scientist named Victor Frankenstein who was allegedly sending explicit letters to a woman who later turns out to be his cousin. What? What? Are you kidding me? Seriously though, we've had like five incest stories this semester. Uh, anyway, I'm on Google because I forgot the professor's name, so, um, just one sec. Uh, okay, Waldman. This is the professor that actually sparks Victor's interest in science. Shortly after that, Victor decides he wants to play God. Comes up with this great idea. Hey, I'm gonna create life. Basically, he got a bunch of dead body parts, put them together, and created this big old monster. And it works. By some miracle, this guy manages to create this thing. So pretty much after like three seconds, after fulfilling his long time goal, after fulfilling his dream, he looks at this thing and he's like, holy sh**. He's in his head thinking like, what have I done? So he's just standing there, looking at this thing, screams and just freaking books it. I'm pretty sure from what I remember, he goes into his room and his monster follows him in there and the monster just follows him inside and he's just reaching out to Victor, literally reaching out. He sees him reaching out to him and he's just like, ah! And just, he basically, he leaves the monster. He, Completely abandoned. Pretty much, Victor disowns the monster and leaves it to fend for itself. Then after that is when the monster befriends a blind guy and then all of a sudden becomes his Harvard scholar. Ladies and gentlemen, Frank Wheeler is on the scene here to give us weather updates, who looks a lot like Ellen DeGeneres, who just went through a growth spurt. Go ahead, Frank. Frank. Ladies and gentlemen, we appear to have technical difficulties. Oh jeez, Jeff! I could hear the whole dang time! I was just messing with you! Practical prank! Now over here you can see- Frank, you pull another stunt like that, I'm gonna rip that toupee off your head and shove it down the toilet, you understand me? Now get back to the weather! Oh Jesus, Jeff! So coming in from the north, eh, we got a small case of sublime! Sorry about that, eh? And it's gonna be a little stormy weather, but at the same time, it's so gosh darn beautiful. So get those wellies on and get a boot in those puddles. And then coming in from the south, eh, we got a little bit, uh... Oh, jeez. What's that word again? Oh. Frank, we're live. We're live, Frank. <gasps> Hoser! Oh, Canuck! Oh, my! Wayne Gretzky's grandfather twice removed! Oh, jeez, Justin Trudeau! What is he doing this time? Why can't I remember that gosh darn words? It's like when I was at Tim Hortons and I ordered a double double and got a two four instead, eh? I just want to sit on my chest to feel and relax, huh? <laughs> well, okay. All right, let's just move on. Yeah, let's just let's keep going. All right. Anyway, the reason why I chose these scenes and the why I decided to talk about these events is because it shows why it's very important to take responsibility and why no one should be running away from their problems. <sighs> well, that's all for today's news story. I don't know how well this video came out. I probably didn't do a good job. Like I said, I should have just done the shoebox. Until then, this is Jeff Omaha, signing off.